Hello everyone, all of us love to play challenge games and in this session today our challenge is to collect as many as cupcakes as possible in 30 seconds. So this game you can play with your friends as a challenge game. It is a timer game where we will learn how to implement timers in a sprite lab. We will also learn how to implement the actions and other stuff. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, let me show you what we will build at the end of this video. Here we have our speed test game or a speed test challenge. Basically, it is uh, there is a lot of cupcakes. As soon as you collect one cupcake, another cupcake will also appear. So let me play it for you guys and show how does it work. So I took one cupcake, two cupcake, third cupcake, four, five, six. Awesome. And it is a challenge game. It is for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, the game will be over and you will have to be very, very fast. The faster the one, you will be able to get more and more cupcakes and you will get the more scores as well, right? So each cupcake is giving you one score in this case and this cute anchor is keep telling you the score again and again. Oh, so I could score 23 cupcakes in 30 seconds. So without wasting any time, let's get started with the coding of this game. Create a new project in a sprite lab. Name it anything you want to. So I will name it as a speed challenge. Okay, so let's start the first. Let's start with putting up the sprites. So my sprite is going to be this cute little cupcake. You can take any other, uh, you know, any other article also. But yeah, I'm in love with this cupcake. Probably this one also I can pick. So I'm picking this cupcake as one of my reward of this game. So, you know, it's a challenge how many cupcakes you can get. So I have this. Let me put this up. So make new sprite, cupcake sprite. And where do we want to make it? I don't want it at any, any fixed SPE, any, any, any fixed particular location. I want it at a random location. So what we will do, we will go to locations and we will pick this random location box. So my cupcake will be drawn at any, any random screen on my canvas. Uh, resize it, it seems to be a little big. If you want to keep it big, keep it big. But I would like to resize a little bit. So maybe I can resize it to 50. Yeah, 50 looks good enough. So we have a um, cupcake with a random location. Every time the game starts, this cupcake will be at a random, random, random location. Now we need an anchor. So let me put up an anchor. And this anchor, again, we will take it from costumes, new costume. And I love girls. I'm going to take a cute little girl. Yes, this is very cute. Okay, so this will be our anchor. So let's put up this anchor as well. So I'm going to put up this anchor. This is 200, 200. Maybe this could go, this could go somewhere, somewhere here. Okay. I, we will also resize it. So let's resize it. Yeah, maybe 70. Yes. So we will also resize it. Fine. So we have our anchor and we have our cupcake also. What next? Next, I think we should give it a little, you know, nice background as well. So let's put up a background. Okay, this looks too dark. So we can probably pick some another background from here. We can pick this bright and colorful uh, background. So let's change the background to this new background. Oopsie, this is yellow to yellow. So yeah, I think we need another background. Um, this. Okay, this is fine. You can pick any background as per you like you. That's not a big deal. You can choose, take your time and choose it. Fine, so we have a background. We have two sprites. What next? Next, I need to start clicking on this cupcake. Clicking means we will have to go to event and pick, pick this event when my cupcake is clicked what is clicked when my sprite cupcake is clicked so what do we want when cup uh, when this cupcake is clicked clicked when this cupcake is clicked we want the score to increase okay and this cupcake to move to another random location jump to another random location so what we will do uh, we will have to take a variable that will store the scores you know variables variable store the information that we could use anytime during the entire program Okay, so we are going to take a variable. Make sure that always you initialize the variable at the beginning. So basically when run, at the time then when program starts running, you should initialize all your variables. So that is why I'm putting it with this when run block. 
Okay, so rename this variable to a score, give it a meaningful name so that, you know, everybody understands what is the meaning of this particular variable. Give it an initial, initial value. This is called initialization of a variable. So what we have done here, set a score is equal to zero. We have created a variable with name is score and initialize its value to zero. Now, initially it is zero. When the player is clicking on the cup click, we want its value to increase by one. So we will again go back to go back to variables and we will use change, change command. So instead of counter, what do we want to change? We want to change a score. Change a score by one. So every time this cupcake is clicked, the score will keep on increasing by one. Okay. Um, but until and unless, you know, this anchor is uh, giving or giving us the score, we will not be able to know what is the score. So this anchor also should keep on, keep on telling us the score. So, so, so what is the command? What is the command? Say me quickly. Yes, say, say command. Say is the command that we will use. Very good. You can keep writing your answers in the comment. I will be very happy. Okay, so what this anchor is going to say, this anchor is going to say, not a low word, this anchor is actually going to say score. So what do we want? We want the score, you know, should be something like this. A score dash, the actual score, the score text and the score. So if we want to concatenate a string and a value, so what do we do? We will use the concatenation operation. So we will go to text and instead of this plane, which do not have any connector, I will use this one because uh, I first, what do I want? I want a string variable or the string value, sorry. I want a string value that will display what value we are going to display next, okay? So if, if this anchor only says one, two, three, four, five, nobody will understand what is one, two, three, four, five. So this anchor will also have to say score one, score two, score three, like that. So we have a score. And to this score, we need to attach this variable score, which will hold the runtime value of my score. Okay. And we can, we just need it for one second, not more than one second. So let's run it and test it. Testing is very, very important. So reset and run. Okay. So what is the problem? Do you see what is the problem? First thing, my cupcake is saying the score, I need to change it. Second thing, my cupcake is not jumping to a random location. So I will have to go to Sprite and use the jump command. So this command, jump to random location. What jumps to random location? My cupcake jumps to a random location. Reset and run it. Score three, score four, score five, score six, score, score, okay, eight. But uh, we will also have to make it a time bound game. So we will have to implement the timer. Yes, we are going to implement the timer so that the game ends after 30 seconds. You can make it 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds as per your wish. But here we will implement it maybe 15 seconds so that, you know, for me, testing becomes easier. For us, you know, we will not have to wait a lot of time for testing. So initially you can also keep it less time and then increase it. So we will go to events and we will again take this event at three seconds. So here we are going to make it 15 seconds game. Okay. 15 seconds. So at 15 seconds, what we will have to do at 15 seconds, the anchor is going to put the final score. So we will just change this text to final score. We will change this text to final score and maybe this time it is going to say it for, you know, more time, say, say for six seconds or seven seconds so that, you know, it, it is the score is on the screen for some more time. What do we want? We also want to remove this cupcake. So we will go and we will take this command. Um, remove, 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 where is remove? Yes, remove. What do we want to remove? We want to remove the cupcake. So remove the cupcake. This is saying the final score. And we also want to put up a message which says game over. So here in library, there is a very, very beautiful game over sprite that you guys can use. You can also create your own. But I like this in most of my games. So I use it frequently. Game over. Yeah, This is a good sprite. So what we will do when my game is ending, we remove this and we are going to make a new sprite game over okay it will not be at random location i just made a copy paste that's why so it will be at 200 200 
And what do we want to make? We want to make, we want to make this game over. Right, okay. So let's test it. I think I will have to resize this game over, but we will see it later. First, let's, let's test it. Okay. Two, three, four. I think one second is very less for this anchor to pronounce the score. We will increase it a little bit. We will increase it to two seconds, maybe. Game over. Final score is 12. So I will, I'm just increasing it to two seconds. And as I mentioned, I'm also going to resize this game over. I want a big game over message. So I'm also going to resize it to say, say, say 300. And let's see how does it works finally. Oh, for in this time. I hope you enjoyed this session. You had a lot of learning and I believe it was a lot of fun. Share and subscribe to the channel and see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.